So in this video, I want to talk about the world of Otama games is tough for mobs volume one. That's right. We're getting into the light novels for this series. And of course, just want to be very clear that based on my knowledge, season one covers volumes one and two and a little bit of volume three. Of course, I will know more as I get through these volumes because of course, I'm just reading volume one and I'm talking about volume one and of course, which would be episodes one through five of the anime so for me what always drew me into the anime originally which made me read parts of the manga which got me ahead of the anime and then and then i stopped watching the anime i don't know why i think things were just too hectic and then i ended up re-watching it fully and then was like you know what i want to read the light novels one of the reasons is because it is a completed story but two I like Otamu game style stories, but a lot of Otamu game style stories are based on the main female protagonist. Like it's like a female character being transported to an alternative world, heaps of guys falling in love with them, and then the story mainly being evolved around that. Now, of course, there is a female character being transported, which is clearly his sister, gathered, though. Which, but what's more interesting is how it's been portrayed because again like I said there are a lot of series out there and I've read many volumes of other series where the main female protagonist is the main character the only character and then there's all this other kind of stuff going on but this one is done very differently and the main male protagonist is not someone you would genuinely really get along with because of how blunt and passive aggressive belittling they're, they're definitely a bit of a rough character, but to be honest, I think one of the reasons why I love this character is because he says what he feels. He doesn't sit there and try and buddy you up and try and make you feel better. He just says what's really going on. He just says, hey, this is the issue. This is what you need to do. And also calls out the hypocrisy. And a lot of characters in this story are very hypocritical, especially the upper class. They're very hypocritical, which is something that I've learned in my years is that there are a lot of people that like to look down on others that like to praise themselves as being so good and being so virtuous and being so perfect, but they are sometimes the most hypocritical, narcissistic people out there. And so seeing this story and seeing the main protagonist act in the way he does is very refreshing. I really love the way he just calls people out for the idiocy that there is. But the other part to it is, of course, this kind of spin to it. You've got two people kind of tampering with this game's systems, this game's world, this game's story. And even though you've got this female protagonist that's definitely persuading these other male characters to fall in love with her, he is also taking things to his advantage as well, taking away things that the main female character is kind of meant to have as hers, like, the ship, the island, these different bonuses, like if you grind these things out in the game, her character is meant to become much, 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 much stronger, but he's denying all that. But then so is she as well. There are many things that she's trying to take away from her, her other rival technically, and they're, they're kind of vying for power. And he is getting the love interests, which is the main, the two girls, his, which aren't really part of the story in the sense of main love rivals it's the other ones have been taken away so the story is just so interesting in what it tries to do it takes an isekai story and it really spins it up in a real fun and charismatic and just it's just crazy i absolutely love it between the different types of characters the different type of world and how stupid the world is and that's the thing though too is that yes i've always said self-aware stories don't doesn't mean it's an excuse for making something stupid and i, I call other light novel series out for trying to be self-aware as an excuse for creating bad story points but that isn't the case here this does not be self-aware of systems in games just for the sake of creating it it highlights how stupid some otamu games can be and just generally some games in general where they add systems in that add no value and they actually become more of an annoyance and that's kind of the fun of the actual world itself is that it follows very much of what the game mechanics would be like this otomo game has a lot of different mechanics that are kind of stupid combat systems bonuses paid systems like it throws those in as a fun way to really spice up the world in the story. It's what I love about it. It is what got me really intrigued back when I first watched the anime, which then got me into the manga. 
but I never really thought about going into the light novels because the light novels is a heavy investment and this is the main source material. I, I love the story and that's why when I ended up re-watching the anime, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go to the light novels. I'm going to read the light novels and see what the story is about beyond the anime itself and of course I wanted to start from the beginning and go all the way through it. That's what I love about the series. It's just so much goddamn fun. And even though I haven't even really gotten into the main points of this story, I just want to highlight what makes a good story. Because the isekais get so much bad rap these days. So many content creators, so many people in the anime community hate on isekais because it is the punching bag of the anime community. Oh, it's an isekai? <laughs> Probably just another copy-paste generic anime. <laughs> I'm Joey. Like, yeah, I'm calling them out because that's what they do. They find an isekai and they use it as a punching bag to get cheap content. But there are a lot of good isekais out there that try to do something interesting and different. Different. And this is one of them. Sure, it's not perfect, but you definitely really start to barrack for the one person that is one of the most arrogant, self-absorbed narcissists out there. But he's also pointing out at the other arrogant narcissists out there. And you can't blame him for being that way when the whole world's tried to basically throw him off a cliff and use him and manipulate him. Like, that's the thing. You're barracking almost for the guy that you kind of shouldn't be. That's what's so good about it. It does such a great job at creating such an unbearable character that you actually want to win. It's brilliant. And then as you go through the story, he starts off like, you know, as a kid, he's got the basics going for him. He just wants to live a basic life. And then the whole system itself, which is very much favored of women have all the power, men don't have the power. They treat men like basically like cattle. <laughs> I feel like this writer is a time traveler if you catch my hint of how things are turning out in this day and age. But yeah, he then tries to use the system to his advantage, his game knowledge to try and get out of being thrown into a situation he doesn't want to be in, which leads him to going to the academy, trying to find a love interest, and he wants to aim for what he believes is at his level. He, he sees the other two girls as like they're too far above him. And so he's always trying to aim below him. But no matter what he does, he ends up pursuing these girls closer. And I think a lot of that comes down to the fact of his honest nature, his good nature. And I think I think he's going to get a little bit more different as the story goes on. I think he's going to become a lot more softer, nicer. But again, as you go through the story, he's just trying to avoid all these bad endings for himself and try and live the sort of the side mob. That's why it's called the way it is. The world is hard for it. The world of Otama games is tough for mobs. He's just trying to be a mob character. Kind of like a little like Eminence in the Shadow where he's just trying to be a mob character on the side and things just don't turn out the way it does. Then he ends up getting into a, a fight with the princes because of how annoying they're being. They're being so arrogant, so stupid so easily brainwashed by a girl that's just throwing a couple of cheap lines. And I think what really irritates me is the fact that this this back and forth between the prince, the main one, and the the princess, and there's just, it's just like, dude, communicate, talk, but he's been brainwashed so heavy by this girl, it's clearly the, the main protagonist's sister, and it's just created absolute chaos in the world. And so now they're trying to fight him. And because he has this like giant mecha suit with a, a, a shovel, it's just so much fun. And everyone hates him. But the two girls, there's something about him that they like. They like the fact that I think that he's, he's straightforward. And sure, he's not super charismatic in the sense like he's trying to say all the smooth lines. But I think they find him charismatic because of the fact that he's just not trying to lead them down a road where they're trying to, sh you know, sh soften them up, sugar them up, like, mm, you're such a pretty girl, or your, your, your eyes are so magnificent today. Like, saying things that you clearly know they're just saying to make you like them. He's just saying the truth, like, yeah, you know, this is the way things are. This is how things are. I think the reason why I like him is he reminds me a little bit of myself. And honestly, if you don't believe me, I, I would be happy to get my friends, my real life friends. Wait, you have real life friends? Yeah, I do. Thank you very much. I know. Who would want to be friends with me? But 
the thing is, is that I've always been someone that's always just said how things are because I hate when people beat around the bush and they try and soften you up. It's just like, just say it how it is. Just, just rip the bandaid off, say if I'm in the right, say if I'm in the wrong, and I'll do the same for you. And I think that's why a lot of my friends like me for who I am. Do I have a very large friend circle? No. Is it because I'm an unbearable, annoying individual? Maybe, maybe it is, but I also like to keep my friend circle smaller because I don't like to have to maintain friends that I don't really need. Like, I hate friend circles where there's a lot of maintenance involved. Like, you're either my friend or you're not. I don't want to do unnecessary pleasantries just to pacify you. And that's what I feel like he's like. He's there to be friends with people that are good to him and vice versa, but he's not going to sit there and buddy you up. That's what I like about him. Maybe I'm wrong in how I perceive him. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you like about the anime and the light novel? Because of course, getting into volume two, I'll be talking a lot more about the rest of the story. And further on in that, yeah, things are gonna get a lot more interesting, but that's what drew me into the anime. That's what drew me into the volumes. And I think it's a great series. I think more people need to give it a chance because it's an isekai that tries to do things differently. So again, love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.